Okay, now we have option C, fresh water for RB geography, and this is basically going to be a case study of one internationally shared water resource and the role of different stakeholders in attempting to find a resolution. So, a really debated like or source of water that has caused a lot of conflict is the Nile. So, what is the background? So, the Nile runs from Burundi, which is its source, through um, Rwanda, Kenya, Sudan, Ethiopia, Egypt, Tanzania, Uganda. <laughs> the Democratic Republic of Congo and Eritrea and South Sudan. Not in that order, obviously, from this map, but those are all the countries. It's 6,650 kilometers long. It's the longest river in the world. It has 10% of Africa's landmass, and it's also prone to drought. Okay, so the key stakeholders are really Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan, these three countries here. Other countries obviously are stakeholders, but they don't have as much as a kind of influence in the debates over the over the Nile. Okay, so let's look at each stakeholder's perspective. So Egypt has a large tourism industry, which means they do need the water supply, maybe for energy, things like their Aswan Dam, they use that for energy. Um, also for kind of food sources, they need it for agriculture, wildlife protection historic rights because they've had various treaties over the past like 100 years basically so in 1902 and 1929 they made treaties with the uk over the rights to the nile in 1969 they made one with sudan having this 60 to 30 percent ratio so egypt was entitled to 60 percent of the water and sudan 30 and then 1980s they made a treaty with the US over their rights to it 1999 with EP Ethiopia and Sudan um, however they never really agreed to like a set amount of share am uh, uh, amongst each nation and then in 2010 they rejected a treaty so there hasn't really been much progress in terms of managing the conflict also, there are many European migrants to Egypt, which has led to a 1.9% increase in the population in 2015. So that obviously creates a strain upon the water sources, meaning they do need that like supply from the Nile. They also built the Aswan Dam in the 19 in 1970, which costed one billion dollars, and that's obviously a very key kind of establishment on the river. And if these like other countries take up the water supply, then this dam won't be maybe as efficient because they can basically hold back the water here. So now let's move on to Ethiopia. So the Grand Renaissance Dam was built later on, on the Blue Nile. Um, and I think they basically begun constructing it in April of 2011. Uh, and that costed $4.8 billion to build and obviously that's a huge investment for them. It actually will take seven years to fill the reservoir of the dam which is very very long and that's kind of what's the main concern of the other countries involved because if it takes them that long to fill the reservoir then they're basically draining the sources from the other countries and the other countries see this as very much unfair. It will create 6,000 megawatts of energy and that also creates a surplus so that can be maybe imported to other surrounding countries. And Addis Ababa, the capital, is largely growing as an economic um, kind of um, city for Ethiopia. So that again, more demand, more incomes rising, that means more demand for water supply and energy and electricity. Finally, Sudan here has another, has a, a again a um, role in this conflict and they are they've actually been against the dam like egypt so they're kind of siding with egypt in that sense however they did used to rule egypt apparently according to them historically they had like claims over egypt so that kind of is one reason why they feel like they might have entitlement to the nile river